day after. Okay. Y debo explicar. Y bienvenidos y bienvenidas. Uh, welcome to everybody. Uh, quick disclaimer, we will record this and then uh, the uh, I write up a little uh, or long <laughs> email after class, every single class, you get the link for the YouTube so that you can watch if you had to miss for an appointment for workmen working in your house, you know, all those things that happen because life happens. So you'll always get the link to the YouTube recording of class. You'll always get in that email also all the links for all of the videos we use, all the audio we use, all the files that we use. So you'll have all that data in the email that goes out uh, uh, after class. Usually I get that done by about two o'clock in the afternoon, probably earlier today. Uh, fantástico. Uh, ¿Cómo están todos? ¿Cómo están todos? Hace frío, ¿no? Sí, hace, sí, hace frío. Es, sí. Hace Yo tengo COVID durante la vacación. La oh. vacación. <laughs> Ay, qué lata, what a pain. Ay, lo siento, lo siento mucho. Ay, a ver. Pero Así... tenemos mucho sal. Mucho ah, sal. Muchos. Sí. Hay, hay, so... hace sol, hay sol, sí. Uh -huh. uh, bien. Ok. Uh, uh, bueno, porque, porque hoy es... Uh, la primera clase es el primer día de las clases de invierno. It's our first class of winter session. Uh, tenemos algo más relajado. We have something a little more relaxing uh, uh, so that everybody kind of gets their feet wet. My, my Monday classes, I said to everybody, you know, this is kind of the difference between dipping your toe in the pool and taking a cannonball jump into the pool. Yeah, first day in, <laughs> you know, especially since we had a few weeks off, you don't want to start out and do the hardest thing ever. No. Uh, vamos a empezar con algo fácil. Sí, vamos a empezar con un video de, de comprensión de escucha. We're going to start with a listening comprehension video. And if you want to watch this video again later, you'll have the link in the email after class. Uh, and, and we're going to explore today, uh, 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 well, not explore, because this will be old stuff, but it'll be old stuff to warm up. We're going to explore that idea of compound phrases again and why they're important and why they're easy to learn to use and how we can use them and flip from talking about the right now, the present to the past. So we're gonna do flip flop in, in time because this is something we can't avoid with any language. We do it with English, we do it with all languages. We talk about what's happening now, what will happen, what did happen. So we're going to mix all that eventually, but we're going to do it in the context of using compound phrases. And you'll see what that's about in a bit. Okay. Um, bum, 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 bum. E practica and practice, of course. And you'll have some practice to do that in smaller groups that you get to talk with groups of two or three people. Uh, and then we come back and we do a recap after your small work group to see how that went. Uh, vale, bueno, donde está? Ah, aquí está, aquí está. Here it is. Uh, tengo que cambiar un poquito. Tu, 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 tu. Uy. Vale. Uh, vamos a empezar con un video de escucha. Uh, es un video que no habla de Navidad estrictamente. Va a hablar de un, un día feriado asociado con la Navidad y es el día de, de uh, Reyes Magos. Uh, Three Kings Day, which just happened a couple days ago. So it's a big day for little kids in Spain and Mexico, really in much of the Latin American world, because this is celebrated in many, many, many Spanish speaking countries. Uh, yeah, it's un video bastante corto. Uh, it's a pretty short video. Uh, 
Aquí. Ok. ¿En serio? <risa> ¿En serio me ha tocado? Atiende el vídeo. Uh. Hoy es 6 de enero. Y en... Hoy es 6 de enero. 6 de enero, sí. En España celebramos el Día de los Reyes Magos. Este es el día en el que la mayoría de los españoles nos hacemos los regalos de Navidad. Los Reyes Magos son tres, Melchor, Gaspar y Baltasar. Y cada persona tiene su rey mago favorito. El mío es... Everybody has their favorite king. Yo nunca pensaba en eso. Well, I never thought about that. Everybody has a favorite out of those three. Ah, qué curioso. Baltasar. Lo celebramos el 6 de enero porque en el calendario católico se celebra la Epifanía. Eh, epifanía. Epif epifanía es epiphany. Es una palabra muy... Uh, una palabra religiosa, sí. Uh, la Epifanía en la Iglesia Católica es el día... Uh, de la visita de los tres reyes magos al, al bebé Jesús. Vale, fácil, ¿no? Ok. Pero hoy en día, en la actualidad, esta fiesta ha perdido un poco el significado religioso. Simplemente it's, it's es... lost a little bit of its religious meaning. Uh, as me, uh, Santa Claus. Uh, es lo mismo aquí. Um, Sí, uh, en nuestro país sí tenemos Santa Claus, y está relacionado un poquito, pero está perdiendo, sí, ha perdido un poquito. It has lost a little bit of its religious significance. It's a gift day. Marilyn, sí. do they get, do, in, in Mexico, Spain, do they get their gifts on Christmas or on Epiphany? Buena, buena pregunta. Uh, es muy común celebrar con dos días. Ah. Es muy común. Y depende de la región de México, ¿sí? A veces uh, se celebra con uh, Santa Claus o Papá Noel o el nombre uh, que, que usan en, en, en la región específica. Uh, pero muchas veces celebran con dos días. Es muy común. Ok, vale. I think she is going to show kind of the little ritual though. Uy, sí o no. Y hacer regalos. ¿Qué le pides a los Reyes Magos, papá? What are you asking them for? And just like we ask Santa, actually little kids do sit in class and write <clears throat> note, write letters during school to the three kings and sometimes to Santa Claus too, depending on, <laughs> you know, but they do that earlier, right? Uh, ok, vale. Muchísimo amor. Sí. Que tengamos un año estupendo. ¿Y algo material? Material, un viaje a Italia. Un viaje a Italia, vale. Pues a ver si se cumple. Pero la fiesta de los reyes no ha empezado hoy. Empezó todo ayer por la noche. Hay un perro. Decía que no hemos empezado con la fiesta hoy. Todo empezó ayer por la noche, la noche de reyes. La noche del 5 de enero. Así que vamos a rebobinar. Un poco. Uh, rebobinar es rewind. For those of you who sew, have a sewing machine, you have a bobbin in the sewing machine. Yeah, a bobbin and rebobinar <laughs> es rewind, rebobinar. Un poquito, vamos a ir un poco hacia atrás y vamos a ver qué hicimos anoche. La And no now she switched to pass with que hicimos anoche, what we did last night. So, you know, part of the excitement like Christmas Eve is a buildup in, uh, you know, in our country for Christmas Day, the day before, uh, el 6 de enero, el 5 de enero, it's the buildup day. And there are usually our big parades. Okay. Uh, if you live in, uh, I had a friend who lived in Valencia for a while, and actually they would go to the port because the ship would come in with the three kings. So depending on where you live, you know, the, the kings come in in different ways. They might come in on land, they might come in on a ship, lo que sea, okay, whatever it might be. Noche del 5 de enero se celebra la cabalgata de Rey.
cabalgata, cabalgata aquí, uh, cabalgar es to gallop. Cabalgata es parade. Yeah. It's the parade. It's the marching along of, of all the people. Yes. Es un desfile de carrozas muy típico en todas las ciudades de España. Los reyes magos y sus pajes, que son sus ayudantes, lanzan caramelos a los niños y los niños les piden sus deseos. Ah, lanzan caramelos, they throw out candy. So, you know, from the parade flows, they throw out candy like they do here when we have a parade. Ok, vale, igual. Ah, mi sobrina quiere una cocina de juguete. Una cocina de juguete. Ah, toy juguete. She wants what? She wants a toy what? Kitchen. Yeah, toy kitchen. Those little toy kitchens yeah. that little little girls sometimes get for yeah for playing. Uh, <laughs> and then they find out what a real kitchen work is. Ah, <laughs> why did I ask for that when I was a kid? Qué idea estúpida. Vale, bueno, aquí. Esa noche, antes de ir a dormir, dejamos nuestros zapatos cerca del árbol de Navidad. Ah, dejamos nuestros zapatos cerca del árbol de Navidad. We leave out, dejar us leave behind or leave out. We leave out our shoes. Ooh. Yeah, that was the old custom. Yeah, uh, put things in your shoes. Kind of like the idea of the stocking, but you leave your shoe out, not your stockings. Porque así los reyes saben dónde tienen que dejar los regalos. Los reyes llegarán muy cansados. Uh, the kings will get there. That llegarán is a future. They will get there very tired. Okay, so this is like us leaving cookies for, and milk for Santa. Así que les dejamos unos dulces y algo de beber. Y también un poquito de agua para los camellos. Ah, agua para, car uh, <risa> agua para los an animales, los uh, camellos. Water for the camels, like little things for the reindeer. Yeah, sí. Oh, pero aquí tenemos whisky para los reyes magos. <risa> How many of us left out whiskey for Santa? Don't think that happened here. <laughs> Brandy. Qué buena idea. <laughs> Qué buena idea. Okay. <laughs> sí. Y a la mañana siguiente, sorpresa, todos hemos sido muy buenos este año, así que aquí están nuestros regalitos. Ah, la cocina de eh, juguete. Los reyes se han comido... Tres magdalena. Oh, they have eaten three muffins. Magdalenas son como muffins, sí. Un plátano. Un Pero plátano. No. <risa> Hay un poquito de ruido porque estamos abriendo los regalos. Pero os quiero enseñar mi momento preferido del día de Reyes, que es comerme el roscón de Reyes. Ah. Her favorite thing, uh, favorito, tenemos la palabra favorito, pero aquí ella dice, nos dice preferido, es igual, preferido es igual a, a favorito, ¿sí? Uh, her favorite thing is eating up, eating up, sí, comerme, eating up, uh, roscón de reyes. Roscón de, y ustedes van a, van a ver, van a ver el roscón de reyes. Ahora os lo enseño y os explico lo que es. Este dulce que es típico del día de reyes se llama roscón de reyes. Roscón de reyes, I'll take the off from it. Ah, es de forma circular, ¿sí? Es como un doná enorme. It's like a huge donut, pero no es doná. It's not really a donut. Sí, es, es un tipo de pan. Es un pan dulce. Es un pan dulce. Roscón de reyes. Y tiene frutas. Ok. Es como un pan dulce en forma de rosca, como de donut gigante. 
este va relleno de crema y además tiene una cosa especial el roscón de reyes. Dentro hay regalos. Entonces, so there are little surprises, little hidden surprises in roscón de reyes. Let's see if I'm lucky, she says. Ah, es, ¿En serio? Es como... <laughs> ¿En serio me ha tocado? Atiende el video. Ah, en serio me ha tocado haciendo el video. Uh, seriously, for real. I got it making the video, meaning she can tell by cutting in that she's got one of the prizes. Okay. Uh, it's, like, me it's like King's Cake for, in New Orleans for Mardi Gras. Sí. Uh, uh, mm, okay. Uh, bien. Uh, uh, me ha tocado. It has touched me. It does not really mean it has touched me. Tocar does mean to touch. <laughs> Yeah, or to play an instrument. But here, me ha tocado ha, is kind of like saying, it's my turn. But what she's really saying is, oh, I got it. I'm the one who got it. Yeah. So me ha tocado means, ah, boom, I got it by surprise. And it's always something that's like, a, you know, a lottery, me ha tocado. When you win the lotto, when you win something, me ha tocado. When it's your turn, me ha tocado. Okay, bien. Creo que me ha tocado el, el premio. A ver, que no lo sabía, eh, de verdad. Uh, and she says, hey, I didn't know about this. Me ha tocado el premio. ¿Qué es? ¿Qué es? ¿Qué es? ¿Qué es el premio? A ver. What's mira, the prize? ¡Qué suertaza! Viene... ¡Qué suertaza! Viene cerrado así en plástico y es un caballito. Es un caballito. So, obviously, these are not big. You know, they're, they're little... Little statue, little plastic things that you put in for the kids. Uh, sometimes it's a baby Jesus baked into the roscón de reyes, yeah. But they're little plastic things that the kids have fun finding because you never know which piece will have the little surprise in it. And sometimes there is a job associated with getting that prize. In Mexico, often the job is that you have to have the next party in February, oh. but here I think it's a little bit different. I think she's yes, caballito. Ábrelo, ábrelo. Un caballito, a little. Bueno, ahora me lo como. ¿Habéis visto? Dentro del roscón de Reyes hay sorpresas. En los roscones tradicionales hay siempre un haba seca. Un haba seca, a dried out bean. That doesn't sound very exciting, does it? Okay. Haba, que es una legumbre. Y la tradición dice que a la persona a la que le toque el trozo de roscón con el haba va a tener muy buena suerte durante el año nuevo. Ah, so the piece, person who gets the dried out bean, if you cut the piece with the bean, you get good luck. That's where she lives, they do that. Y además, el año que viene tiene que pagar el roscón. Ah, and the next year you have to pay for the nest roscón that is purchased. So uh, these roscones, they're always circular and they are, uh, uh, it's one of those things if you walk past uh, bakeries and pastry stores, panaderías, pastelerías, uh, it, they'll, they'll have them like stacked up. You know, I mean, they're like, everybody buys these okay. and then they, they sell out super fast. Este roscón era más moderno, así que tenía pequeños juguetes. A veces hay algunas sorpresas que tienen un significado. I'm so surprised it has ejemplo, a meaning. Te puede tocar un pequeño chupete y eso significa... Oh, you could get a little uh, pacifier. Chupete literally means a sucker, because chupar is to suck. Well, this is for babies, yeah? Que hmm. vas a ser madre o... Oh, oh, parenthood, you'll have a kid that year. That could be a good or bad surprise. Ah. 
anillo y significa que te vas a comprometer o te vas a casar. Ah, uh, there might be a little ring saying that somebody, you know, is going to get married. O simplemente te puede tocar un pequeño muñeco. Or a little, ¿Veis que uso little toy. el verbo little tocar? Doll. El verbo tocar tiene muchísimos, muchísimos significados. And she's pointing out that tocar has many meanings. En español, muchos usos. Si quieres practicar, escribe en los comentarios una frase usando el verbo tocar. Yeah. El Día de Reyes también hacemos una comida un poco más especial, algo más de fiesta. Mirad qué carne ha hecho mi madre. Me está cortando la uh -huh. Venga, vamos a brindar. Y brindar es to toast. Ok, brindar tu toast. Chin chin. Chin chin. chin, chin. Salud. 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 Dinero y amor. <risa> bueno, pues hasta aquí el vídeo de hoy. Espero que te haya gustado y que hayas aprendido algo nuevo. Si te gustan mis vídeos, ya sabes. Ah, y bien. Ok, vale. Eso eh, es. Eh, ya está. That's it. Uh, bien. Uh, bueno, un roscón. Un roscón. Okay, but you noticed in her video how she flipped around between present and past. We do that all the time. And we'll be doing that shortly, but not right away. Uh, lo, que, lo que vamos a hacer, what we're going to do, lo que, what? Lo que vamos a hacer primero es practicar esta idea de usar dos verbos Juntos. We're going to practice this thing of using two verbs together. Uh, why we do that, why it's a good thing, and uh, how it's a super easy thing to do. But we're going to take that as a step of expressing some ideas. You'll be doing, we'll be doing it together, and then you'll be doing it in small groups. And uh, then we'll move from there to see how we can use that same easy idea to talk about right now or. Yeah, sometime in the past. Okay, ¿por qué es importante? Vamos a ver un poquito aquí. Uh, ¿Por qué es importante usar uh, la habilidad de usar dos verbos juntos? Es un poder, es un superpoder. It's a superpower. And it's something we do all the time, but it's uh, certainly worthy of review. So we're going to see just a part of this video. If you want to watch the whole thing on your own later, you can, but we don't need the whole thing today for class. A conjugated verb and a verb in infinitive form. So we're going to talk about, or he's going to talk a little bit as a preview about using two verbs together, a conjugated and infinitive. This means we're talking about the person who is doing something and we're connecting two ideas. This is a way to always, uh, to actually to expand our vocabulary. An example of a compound phrase in English is, I need to eat. In Fácil. this example, I need is the conjugated verb and to eat is the verb in infinitive form. We can often identify infinitive verbs in English because they have two in front of them. Next, we can easily swap verbs in and out of this phrase to change its meaning. For example, I need to go, I need to speak. Now note if we change I need to a different verb such as I can, we have to be very careful with the word to. I can to speak obviously doesn't. <laughs> Nobody says I can to speak in English, right? But yeah, so these compound verbs in English, sometimes we use the to and sometimes we don't. I need to speak uses the to, but I can speak doesn't use the two in English anymore, but in Spanish it will. So the important thing is that second verb always stays in its basic, basic form that we call the infinitive, something that ends in AR or ER or IR. Okay. And that part doesn't need the change. Doesn't work. We need to say, I can speak. I must speak. You are but then if we go back to I want to speak, we need to add the to back in. In English, the part of the compound phrase that dictates what goes in the gap between the two verbs is the first verb. And this is exactly the same in Spanish. When you have a compound phrase in Spanish, the first verb will dictate what needs to go in the gap. So if we translate this sentence into Spanish, 
we get. Quiero hablar. Nothing in the gap. The gap means what's between the two phrases. Quiero means nothing in between itself and that, that second verb. Okay. Sometimes that first verb, like in this case, it's quiero, but for some verbs, there'll be a little tiny preposition in between, but not all. And you just need to know which ones need something in that gap between and which ones don't. And you only really know that from hearing a lot of examples, but we're going to just see a few today. Here, quiero is the conjugated verb and hablar is the verb in infinitive form. Notice we don't have anything in the gap. In general, this is more common in Spanish, and you can think of most compound phrases in Spanish as being similar to the English compound phrase, I can speak or I must speak, where there is no two in the middle. Also note, just like English, depending on the context, this could be a complete sentence on its own, but some other options might be, Quiero hablar español. I want to speak Spanish. Quiero hablar con ella. I want to speak with her. But for now, we're going to focus on the compound phrase part of the sentence because mastering this will significantly improve your ability to communicate in Spanish. The next step is to swap out the conjugated verb or the verb in infinitive form with any Spanish verb you know to form a range of sentences and ideas. In the last video, the 10 must know Spanish words and phrases, I introduced the concept of a compound phrase without explaining exactly what it was. But if you want to go back and check out that video, I'll leave a link below in that description. But in that video, I give four must-know verbs that you need to know how to use in a compound phrase. And these verbs are quiero, I want, puedo, I can, necesito, I need, tengo que, I have to. So these are the four we're going to focus on today, okay? We're going to do this in steps. You see that quiero won't need anything in between the two verbs. Puedo won't need anything between the two. Necesito won't need anything. But tengo needs that little word que. And if you skip that word que, people will notice. And they will do a bada boom, bada boom pause to sit and kind of roll their eyes and maybe think about what you said, right? Uh, how do you know? Why does tengo need the, why does tengo need the word que in between itself and the verb? It just does. You just need to know that, sadly. You need to memorize it. Well, you know what? You hear it enough, you don't need to memorize it, right? You hear enough examples and you know it's there. So uh, we're going to show just a couple examples and then we're going to go into practice. But we're going to see how versatile this is. And of course, these four verbs, quiero, puedo, necesito, tengo que, are not the only ones that can be used in a two verb combination. There are other verbs that do that same thing. And maybe we'll look at a few more of those next week. Uh, but these are probably the most common ones. Uh, so we're going to take the most common ones and take a look at them first. So now we can say, Algunos Puedo hablar. Puedo hablar. I can speak. Necesito hablar. I need to speak. Tengo que hablar. I have to speak. And of course, you could swap out hablar for any other verb that you know. Tengo que comer. I have to eat. Tengo que dormir. I have to sleep. Tengo que encontrar. I have to find. The next and most important step is to learn how to swap out the conjugated verb for all of its different forms. And it's this step that can significantly reduce the learning curve when it comes to Spanish verb conjugations. So for example, if we start with the verb to want in English, we can conjugate the verb as follows. I want, you want, he or she wants. Okay. And that's a little too simple, so we're going to stop there. If you want to watch more of that, you can. Here are the two big takeaways that you can take from this. Uh, one helpful thing is that, you know, these are common structures, as they are in English. So in Spanish, it's helpful to use them. And the second important thing to know is this is a good way to expand your vocabulary. Voy a... Voy a ilustrar esta idea un poquito. Uh, por ejemplo, uh, it's a good way to expand your vocabulary without having to conjugate a lot of stuff. That's the cue. Uh, 
because that second verb never gets conjugated, you can just use it to get familiar with a new verb without having to conjugate that new verb so that you know the base form. Okay, por ejemplo, aquí. Porque hace tanto frío, tengo que podar mis plantas. I'm going to have to prune, prune out that dead stuff that got frozen in my backyard. Yeah. Uh, and let's say I don't know the word prune or trim or, you know, okay. I could say cortar and make that easy. Cortar es un verbo fácil. Pero para hablar de las plantas específicamente es común decir podar, podar, P-O-D-A-R, podar, to prune, cut out. And that means you're cutting it out from a plant, not you're cutting up the veggies on your kitchen countertop, or not you're cutting up paper to help your grandkid with their, their project, right? So, okay. Okay. Uh, so you can expand your vocabulary a lot with these kinds of structures because you say, hmm, I'm just going to look up how to say prune plants, podar. You don't need to know anything about podar. You don't need to conjugate podar. You just learn to insert that new infinitive. So it's a good way to acquire some new vocabulary. Say you did not know the word for fry, por ejemplo. See, you want to deep fry some French fries, something like that, right? Uh, freír. You would not need to know anything about how to conjugate freír, okay? Uh, la diferencia entre podar, to prune, y freír es una diferencia muy grande. Podar, you don't know it, but I do, is a very regular verb. If I were to use it on its own, I would need to know how to conjugate it, but oh, I can figure that out because it's a regular verb, AR verb, right? But freír is a very irregular, stump changing verb. And if I were to take away the necesita, you know, the necesito, take away the quiero, take away the puedo, uh, take away the tengo que, I would need to know how to use that verb uh, freír. And I would need to know that it gets a funny, odd I stem change. Yeah. But if I use the tengo que, I don't need to know anything about that funny, odd, hard to conjugate freír verb. Okay, me entienden. Understand what I'm saying with this? So you can learn to use a lot of verbs without having the fuss of, I got to conjugate that second verb because you don't conjugate the second verb. <laughs> hey. Okay, so uh, es un paso. It is a step. This is a step we can use to acquire some new verbs that you may not know that, you know, you may practice in your off time after class uh, and add in a new verb that you want to learn. Let's say you want to talk to somebody about, I am, um, I have to water, I have to water that new plant. And you don't know how to say to water. And, you know, you could do a workaround, e poner or dar agua, give water, but that sounds a little lame. Would somebody understand you? Yeah, they would. But would it sound a little weird? Sure. Like it would sound weird to say, I'm going to put some water in that hole there. <laughs> really? Okay. But to say you're going to water your plants, well, that is immediately, yeah, okay. Uh, to water your plants is regar. Regar, okay? So you can add that one word, regar, without, without having to know how do I conjugate it? How do I conjugate it? You can look that stuff up later, right? But you can acquire that new word and add it into the quiero regar, puedo regar, uh, uh, necesito regar, tengo que regar, tengo que regar las plantas. You can make it even a little more complicated by saying, oh, I can also make that idea negative. Put in a no, right? Uh, no tengo que regar las plantas hoy. Bien? 
Okay, vale. So there are all different things we can do to kind of add in different ideas in smaller steps by using uh, this idea of compound phrases or compound verbs. We're going to take that even a little bit deeper in a bit, but we're going to take the basic stuff first. Uh, and, and don't feel you have to take copious notes, please. Well, unless you really want to. A menos que quieran, unless you really want to, because you're going to get all these little uh, slides. Uh, en un minuto. Okay. Uh, verb conjugated plus infinitive. So just make sure you don't conjugate that second verb. And we don't do that in English either. So, you know, it's an easy step there. Okay. Uh, este nivel es el nivel más básico. This is the, the most basic level. Uh, we're going to do uh, the... Uh, uh, we're going to combine two things. Oh, we're going we're gonna to make it a little more complex. Uh, we're going to add in a, a quiero. We're going to add in a verb. And then we're going to add a second phrase using something else. See, we've got our four types of verbs up here. Uh, querer, necesitar, poder, tener que. These are the parts we're actually going to conjugate. We're going to take two of the things from the top list and we're going to connect them. We're going to connect them with this connector of pero, but. Yeah, vamos a ver. Okay, un ejemplo. Un ejemplo, aquí. Uh, quiero, uh, quiero comer, quiero comer un pastel. I want to eat a goodie, mm -hmm. a pastry. Ah, coma, <laughs> let's put a comma in there. Pero, necesito. Pero necesito bajarme de peso. <laughs> ah, 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 ah. I'm connecting two of these combo ideas. I want to eat a pastry, but I need to go down in weight. Yeah. Uh, and you could even just use instead of bajar, perder, because they use that for perderme de peso, si, yeah, lose weight. You could use either one. Uh, bajarme, we'll leave that in because that's a little bit easier. Bajarme de peso, okay? Uh, we're going to take two verbs from the top and combine them, si? Aquí. Uh, por ejemplo, por ejemplo, <laughs> quiero, pero no puedo. I want to do something, but I can't. Bien. Uh, por ejemplo. Uh, quiero, uh, quiero hablar, pero uh, no. Quiero hablar, pero no puedo encontrar a mi celular uh, o mejor quiero llamar a mi amiga I want to call my friend but I can't find my phone así bien ok uh, I want to do something, but I have to. Okay. Un ejemplo. Un ejemplo. Aquí. Quiero. Uh, 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 quiero. Quiero ir al museo. Uh, pero tengo que... Ah, que tengo que trabajar en casa. I want to go to the museum, but I have to. I have to work at home. See? Uh, we're, 
we're using little connector, the little connector pero. Yeah, we're using the little connector pero. So we're using two combos together. Yeah, uh, quiero the first half and a different one in the second half. See, uh, I'm going to underline the new one because uh, quiero is the same in all of these. Uh, and we're going to underline the new one here. So what I want you to do going out into your first breakout room is I want you to look at those same patterns and what you do, and you've got an example for each. See if you can create some new ideas, different ideas using the same pattern, meaning you're going to have a quiero in the first half with a second verb, and you're going to connect it with a necesito and a second verb. Entienden? Understand? Si? Bien? Vale? And you will see that screen when you go into the little breakout rooms. Okay? Vale? Um, ba, 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 momentito. Uh, vamos a ver, vamos a ver. Aquí. Bien. Si, sí, perfecto, perfecto. Okay, you will see that. So you didn't need to write any of that down because you'll see it on the screen when you go in there. So you're going to see your join button. I'm going to give you about uh, maybe seven minutes to come up with some different kinds of ideas, but using those same patterns. And you'll see that screen pretty quickly. I got to go in and, ooh, tengo que, tengo que usar la pantalla en los... Cuartos pequeños, los pequeños cuartos aquí, bien, vale, sí, share screen, okay, so you can hit your little join button and go off into smaller rooms and create some new ideas, but using the same pattern. And it might take a while for everybody to get their join button to come up. Sometimes our Wi-Fi works against us. <laughs> uh, uy, a ver, sí. I don't think I meant to do that. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, no, hay, no hay en un cuarto. Uh, no, no hay un cuarto. No, no. Uy. Uy, I was pasó? with Trish and now I'm not. Maybe I hit something wrong. Um, Vamos a ver. Let's see if I can kind of rearrange some things. Maybe I hit the send. Yeah, I, I went into it, but then I came out of it. Wow. Okay. ¿Qué pasó? What happened for you? Lo siento. Sorry about that. Um, I might have hit the wrong button. Nora, hang turn. in there with me here. Sure. Uh, okay, Diana and Trish will be in. Uh, Nora, if you just want to, if, if both of you ladies want to hang with me and everybody else, sure. uh, cause we've got some new folks and they might not see the join button or they might not be able to use the join button for some reason. So I, uh, I was popped out of room three as well. Okay. Yeah, I don't know what happened there. Uh, actually, this reminds me to tell people to update Zoom sometime this week. Oh, that not. might be why you're having a problem. I think Zoom had an update first of the year. And sometimes when they have those updates, things go glitchy and okay. weird. It happened to me with a family call this weekend. So it's the mysteries of the internet, you know. Um, okay, vamos a practicar un poquito. Uy, que tengo que ponerme... Uh... I gotta set my little watch for a timer here. Vale. Well, I could say my first one while we're waiting. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you can see, because I don't know if it's projecting in. We want to use a quiero, pero necesito. I want, but I need to. All right. Well, here's mine. Quiero leer mi libro nuevo. Ah. Pero necesito cocinar almuerzo. Ah, bien, perfecto. Quiero leer mi nuevo libro. I want to read my new book, pero tengo que cocinar. But I have to cook, ¿sí? Or necesito cocinar. Bien, perfecto. <laughs> Buen ejemplo. 
one example. Okay. Um, maybe we can use a uh, quiero with a uh, no puedo. Oh, okay. Uh, quiero with a uh, pero no puedo. Uh, I want to, but I can't. Quiero comprar pantalones, pero no puedo. Pero no puedo, no puedo. Pero no puedo dinero. No, no puedo, no puedo pagar. No puedo sí. pagar. Sí, pero no puedo pagar. I can't pay. Ah, sí, así es. Sí, bien. Uh, pero no puedo pagar, but I can't pay. Perfecto, ok. Uh, otro ejemplo. Uh, quiero with a, a tengo que. Quiero, pero tengo que. Quiero. Ah, quiero limpiar la casa, pero no tengo ganas que limpiar. <laughs> Tengo que limpiar mi casa, pero no tengo ganas. De, no tengo, sí. Uh, I don't feel like it. Yeah, sí. Uh, <laughs> no tengo ganas de limpiar, sí. That's a little different than the tengo que, pero vale, but it's okay. Sí, es buen ejemplo. <laughs> no Gracias. tengo ganas. I don't feel like it. Es, es, sí, que tan, es, es muy común. Es muy común. It is really, really common. Okay. Uh, Excelente, sí. Um, uh, I wanted to try something about quiero nadar, pero tengo que más caliente. I don't know. I have, uh, to, okay. I have to use the that word to be. Really mm. uh, yeah, that won't, won't work with a tengo que so well. Uh, uh, quiero, quiero nadar, pero hace frío. Así yeah. que, así que no puedo, so sí. Uh, uh, tengo que, na uh, or quiero nadar, pero uh, no puedo usar la piscina. Cuando es tanto cuando, frío. Cuando hace frío. Sí, exacto. Muy bien, muy bien. Uh, perfecto, perfecto, sí. Hay muchas combinaciones. There are many things we can combine to say more interesting things uh, when we do this. Sí. Hay, hay otro ejemplo. Quiero mirar la película, pero um, no puedo ir a la cine hoy. Ok, sí. Uh, quiero ver una película, pero uh, no puedo usar el wifi <laughs> uh, o, o el wifi, depende de la región, sí. Uh, I, I want to watch a movie, but I can't use the wifi, sí, por ejemplo, sí. Uh, algo así. Uh, entonces, sí, hay muchas man maneras de combinar ideas. Bien. Um, Quiero, o oh, por ejemplo, sí, uh, quiero caminar, quiero caminar, pero necesito, uh, necesito ponerme una chaqueta primero. Mm. Sí, quiero caminar en el barrio uh, cerca de mi casa, pero ne Necesito ponerme una chaqueta uh, porque hace frío. Bien. Bien. Ok. Uh, Otra idea. ¿O oh, no? Quiero ir a California, pero necesito poner reservaciones. Reservaciones. Ah, ah sí. Pero necesito hacer reservaciones. Tengo que hacer reservaciones. Sí, perfecto. Gracias. Perfecto. Muy bien. Buenas ideas. Buenas ideas. Muy bien. Uh, bueno, I'm going to give people uh, a little bit. Uh, we're going to give them. They're going to have one more minute to come out of Zoom rooms. And we'll compare how people did. Uh, un minuto más. <laughs> y acabamos. 
Okay. Yeah. Okay. And we'll hit our closed rooms, bring people back, see how they did, see what questions they have. Quiero aprender uh, español, pero um, necesito más. Um, oh, I necesito practicar más. Ah, exacto. Exacto. Excelente. Bien. Ok. Y todos van a... Todos van a regresar en, hmm, en 20 segundos. Everybody's going to come back in about 20 seconds. Creo, I think. Creo que sí. A ver. Maybe everybody's Zoom is strange today. Yeah. And, you know, actually it is in an odd way kind of good that our Okay, vale, aquí estamos, here we are. And, and you know what, uh, this is a good opportunity for me to remind people when we're done with our session here together today, sometime this week, go into the basic Zoom website and update your version of Zoom because there often are not automatic updates that necessarily go out. And I got a little message saying some people uh, may have things not quite working because they may not have updated their Zoom. So uh, sometime this week, make sure you update. And it, it's yeah, a matter of just going into their basic website, telling it to do that. Okay, vale, bueno, ideas. Uh, uh, Ejemplos, some good examples that you came up with or some questions, hitches, where you said, hmm, don't know how to use this, wanted to say this, but didn't know how. No. Algo, no? Bien, fácil, kind of easy? Yeah. Bastante sí. fácil, pretty easy? Okay. Sí. Sí. Bien, bien. Okay, mm -hmm. um, we're going to switch our emphasis here a little bit and practice the same basic kind of structure but in a different way okay we're going to flip into uh uh using something different instead of using we used a lot of quiero 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 i want to i want to we're going to switch into have to and the reason we're going to focus on this one right now is that this is one of the verbs that needs that little word que between itself and the second verb which is the second verb stays in infinitive right uh it needs the word que it the word que doesn't translate to mean anything in english it just needs to be there because tengo needs that little word que and you just need to know that so we're going to switch from quiero 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 to tengo que tengo que tengo que i have to okay and again again oh we're going to have little connectors but those connectors uh are going to be a little bit different in some cases uh bien Okay, vale. Um, our first connector is going to be a pero again, because that's the one we used first. So we're comfortable with that one. Tengo I que, have... pero quiero. I have to, but I want to do something else. Or, or instead of using quiero, you might want to make it negative. No quiero. Either one might be possible. Okay. Uh, Por ejemplo, uh, tengo, uh, tengo que estudiar, pero uh, no quiero pasar <laughs> uh, la tarde uh, leyendo. I want to study. I want to study, but uh, I don't <laughs> want to spend the afternoon reading. Ah, no quiero pasar. No quiero pasar. I don't want to spend. 
when we talk about spending time, not spending money, but spending time, it's pasar, ¿sí? Tengo que estudiar, pero no quiero pasar la, la tarde leyendo, ¿sí? Por ejemplo, un es, un ejemplo. Tengo que, and we're going to use a cuando. Uh, tengo que. Tengo que, uh, tengo que, I have to do something when I want something else. Okay, un poquito más complicado, a little bit more complicated. Instead of using pero as our little connector word, we're going to use cuando this time, cuando, when. And we're going to talk about habits with this. We're not going to talk about what is coming up in the future. That's a different use of when, but a when that talks about habits. Uh, tengo que, uh, ooh, uh, tengo que comprar uh, vegetales cuando quiero cocinar. Bien. We're going to talk about a habit, something you generally do, not that's not something that's future down the road, but a habit. Uh, I have to buy veggies when I want to do this other thing, which is Cook. 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 Okay. Tengo que comprar vegetales cuando quiero cocinar. Okay. Vale. Sí. Bien. Uh, let's use cuando again. I have to do something when I need to do something else. Okay. Por ejemplo. Por ejemplo. Tengo que. Tengo que usar, uh, uh, tengo que usar efectivo, efectivo es cash, cash, not credit card, cash, cash, not debit card, cash. Tengo que usar efectivo uh, cuando necesito uh, comprar un café. Perdón. I have to use cash when I need to buy a coffee. Let's say I'm going to some place that doesn't take a credit card for buying a coffee. Okay. Bien. Vale. Bueno. Okay. So instead of using quiero, 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 in all of our examples, we're going to use a tengo que, tengo que, tengo que, so that we get used to the idea that some little verbs do need an extra word. In this case, that extra word is going to be that little extra word of que. So that is something you don't want to uh, leave out. Bien? Vale? Bueno. Okay. Entienden? Everybody understand? Si? Sí? Bien? You will see those going into the breakout room. Uh, uy, a ver. Donde está mi botón? Ay, donde está mi botón? Mm -hmm. Está en más. Sometimes, wow. Okay. Vale, bien. Oh, and this may have flipped some people around. Let me hang on a minute. Oh, momentito, momentito. Okay. Vale, bien. Give it a go. And oh, hit your join button. I'm going to get your share screen in. Oh, eh, Diana, momentito. Let's see. I think we've got somebody who's got a control that isn't working at all on her tablet. Maybe she can get that fixed. Vale, bien. Y cinco minutos.
vamos a ver cuáles son los ejemplos que tiene cuando todos regresen. Uh, when everybody comes on back, we'll see what examples they had. Okay. Okay, bien, estás aquí. You are here. Uh, and you may want to check and see if you need a, a zoom up. Oh, she got in. She got her problem fixed, but now I got to move her someplace else. Ah, ah, ah. Oh, she figured it out. Good. Okay. Bien. We got one little technical problem fixed. Problemas técnicos, technical problems. Todos tenemos de vez en cuando problemas técnicos. We all have technical problems from time to time. And usually first class is the time when it's going to happen. We iron out the rough spots. Hay dos minutos más. We've got two more minutes of people being in their small rooms, breakout rooms, and then everybody's going to come back and share ideas and share questions. Put in our broadcast message. Let's get a little mass. Para terminar el ejercicio. Okay, we're just going to come back in one minute. And we'll see what worked out well, what maybe needs some polishing off the rough edges. Bien. Let me stop sharing that and start to bring people back on in. Okay. Vale, aquí vienen todos. Here comes everybody back. Fantástico. A ver, bueno. Uh, bueno, ¿cuáles son sus ideas? ¿Cuáles son, son ejemplos o preguntas? What are your questions or maybe examples? I have a question. Sí, sí, dime. I said... 
Tengo que cocinar en casa cuando quiero ser saludable. But I wasn't sure if it's ser or estar. Ah, 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 sí. Or ser saludable else. is to be healthful, uh, healthy. Eh, uh, sí, estar, uh, um, sí, no se usa, eh, mm, uh, bien, saludable is healthy as in an object being healthy, like a food item. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sí, es saludable. It is a, you know, a food is either a healthy thing or right. it isn't in that category, yeah? We're identifying if it's in the junk food category or the good for you category. And that's identifying what it is, ser. See? Okay. Bien. But not for people so much. Yeah, to be... To be healthy, uh, so saludable, uh, es cuestión de, uh, really, this isn't a ser estar as much as it is a vocabulary thing. Saludable is healthy when we're talking about items or uh, uh, items of food or an activity, maybe, like, por ejemplo, por ejemplo, es saludable, uh, es saludable caminar, it's healthy to walk. Ah, uh, bien. Es saludable a uh, 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 subir las escaleras. It's healthy to walk up the stairs, you know, as opposed to taking an elevator, right? See? Uh, but if somebody is healthy, uh, está sano. Es, if somebody if in, their, in their body is healthy. See? ¿Sí? Entiendes? Then we use estar, right? And it's a different word. It's not saludable. When okay. We talk about that person is healthy. We would not use saludable. Okay. Okay. Que 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 de con saludable. Es saludable. Sí. Bien. Okay. Ah, uh, bueno. Ah, uh, so otra pregunta. Word for, for the person to be healthy. Ah, uh, sano or sana. S a n o. Exacto. And you get sano. And oh, what but, uh, what you know, pero you eh, estar bien, we also use just estar bien to say that somebody is well, meaning they are healthy. Okay. Okay. But, you know, salo y sano, safe and sound. Uh, uh, yeah, that kind of idea, it's estar. Sí. Okay. Buena pregunta. Buena pregunta. Otra pregunta o otro ejemplo. Another question or another example? No? Sí, tengo que limpiar mi casa, pero quiero ir a la cama. Ah, eso sí. Sí. Buen ejemplo. Buen ejemplo. Sí. Me gusta. Uh, ¿Hay otro ejemplo? ¿Any other example? Um, tengo que trabajar, pero quiero jugar. Exacto. Sí. Bien. Me gusta. I like that. Eso sí. That's exactly right. Okay. Vale, perfecto. Ahora, ahorita, let's take this up a notch, but just a tiny notch. And what I want you guys to think about or realize or maybe practice is one little tiny hitch. We're going to talk about how we take this idea of combining two verbs, and now we're going to reduce this to a shorter sentence. Uh, this idea of taking two verbs, using them together, conjugated verb and an infinitive. But what if I don't want to talk about the right now? What if I want to talk about an hour ago? Uh, yes, last night, last week, right? What if I want to use the past? So if we want to use the past, what's going to happen is the verbs querer and poder and necesitar and tener que are have to, going to have to go into a past tense. So we can still use two verbs together and we can bump it up, rack it up to something a little bit harder and talk about the past instead of about talking about a present situation going on right now. 
or talking about a habit of what we do every day. For habits we do every day for what's happening right now, that's what presente, presente that's what the present tense, that's its job, okay? But to talk about the past, we need either preterito or imperfecto, one of those two. And for a lot of these, uh, a lot of these are verbs of, uh, uh, that are kind of more emotion or ability kind of verbs. And that means they're not all going to be pegged in time. Tenerque is the one thing that's kind of out of that realm. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, what if instead of saying, quiero, puedo, necesito, tengo que, I want to say, I wanted in the past. I could, uh, I had that ability uh, I was able to, okay, right? That's poder. Uh, I needed to, okay? Uh, or I had to, and had to is kind of a different case, but we're going to look at the first three. Uh, the first three are generally going to go into imperfecto. So if I want to say uh, I wanted, I could, or I needed to, most of the time, it's pretty safe to put those into uh, imperfecto. So if I want to talk about that in the past, all I need to do is to use that imperfecto for the first verb. I don't need the second verb to do anything at all. Remember, it stays as an infinitive, right? Uh, quería, I wanted to. Or if you want to make it a negative, no quería, I didn't want to, right? And we just make a negative by putting a no in front of it. Podía, I could. No podía, I couldn't. And this is used for the had the ability to, okay? Bien. Poder can go into preterito also, but that's uh, uh, talking about actually getting that done as opposed to I was able to, or I used to be able to, okay? Uh, necesitaba will generally stick with that imperfecto. Tener que can go into imperfecto. Tener que out of this group of four to talk about the past might go into preterito. Uh, um, uh, you know, actually I should put both of these in. And it depends on your emphasis. Okay. Uh, if, in a lot of cases, and the reason I say this is that you hear this both ways. You just hear this both ways. Uh, tenía que, I had to do something, and you're just talking about that general situation. Tuve que, if I flip that into imperfecto, which sometimes people will, what they're emphasizing is that it was a really finished act and something that had to get done. And if that is the idea, the nuance, they want to plug into that idea, then they'll flip it into preterito. But if you're just talking about some general chore in the past, it often is going to stay in still imperfecto, tenía que. So tener out of these two is very, very likely to go to either one. And the preterito will be used if you're really talking about something that was defined in time. I had to get this done, okay? And you're really boxing it into a completed act as opposed to just an obligation, in which case it's just imperfecto, okay? So make it easy on yourself this time and use these all with imperfecto. Tenía que, still infinitive. Don't conjugate the second part. Necesitaba, still the infinitive. Don't conjugate the second part. Podía or no podía and infinitive. Yeah, bien. Uh, quer quería, I wanted to, or no quería, didn't want to. And we're not going to use any connectors or connect. We're just, because we're using that extra step of using the past, which is a harder step, we're just going to focus on First verb, infinitive, first verb, infinitive. Bien, si? Sí? Okay. Uh, a ver, let's give you some time to work that. We. Oui.
Perfecto. And after you hit the join button, you will see the new, the new screen in your breakout rooms. Yeah. Okay, vale. Is your join button working yet or is that still? No, sorry. Wow. wow. But can no. Wow. Wonder why that's not. Yeah. Check and see if you need an update on your, your sure. screen. You know, when we're done with class, not right now, because right now it'll mess things up. If you want to practice with me right now, that's okay. Stay aim. See. See? Uh Keria. I wanted to do something. Keria. Quería caminar, quería andar, pero, let's see, quería andar, pero, pero, quería andar, pero, is pero the next word? You can't. No, actually, you just don't even need the pero this time. Oh, you can use it if you want to, but you don't have to. We're not using oh, the pero. Quería andar, um, pero demasiado frío. Frío. Okay. And we'll need just one little extra word there. Your idea is good, though. Uh, quería andar, pero hacía mucho frío, but it was really cold. Yeah, mucho frío. Yeah. Pero hacía mucho frío, and then, yeah, we're just using hacía to talk about what the weather was doing, ¿sí? Pero hacía yeah. mucho frío, sí. Uh, sí, quería andar, pero hacía mucho frío, ¿sí? Uh, a ver, uh, quería, quería, uh, uh, bien, Nora quería uh, nadar, pero hacía mucho frío. She wanted to swim, but it was really cold, ¿sí? Bien. I see. Okay. Uh, oh, and she got, oh, yay. Fantastico. She got her join button to work. Eso me gusta. Sí. Uh, podía. Sí. El segundo ejemplo, por ejemplo. Podía. Uh, uh, ayer, ayer yo uh, podía. Uh, yo no podía. I was not able to. Yo no podía montar en bicicleta. Ayer no podía uh, andar o montar en bicicleta porque hacía mucho frío. I wasn't able to bike because it was really cold. ¿Sí? Uh, uh, anoche podía, po, anoche, o oh, así, uh, podía ver... Uh, uh, dos películas, uh, algunas películas con mi familia. Okay. Uh, yo podía, uh, uh, podía cocinar, uh, ayer, uh, podía cocinar para toda la familia. I was able to cook for the whole family. Sí. Uh, if I want to talk about a habit, I can also use podía in the past. Uh, por ejemplo, uh, cuando era joven, when I was young, <laughs> cuando era joven, uh, podía subir a uh, montañas con mi esposo. I could uh, do some mountain climbing when I was young. Ahora no lo hago. Now I don't do it. <laughs> Sí, poder. Uh, poder. Necesitaba. Necesitaba. Habla del pasado. Entonces, necesitaba. Uh, yo necesitaba. Uh, necesitaba ayudar a mi esposo uh, con su trabajo en el jardín. Necesitaba ayudar a mi esposo. Con el trabajo en el jardín. I needed to help my husband with work in the yard. Sí. Uh, así. Y bien. Uh, por fin tenía que. Tenía que. 
tenía que, uh, tenía que uh, manejar a uh, muchas tiendas uh, el fin de semana. Tenía que manejar a muchas tiendas el fin de semana. I had to drive to lots of stores over the weekend, period. Okay, it was just something I had to do over those three days, uh, viernes, sábado, domingo, uh, during the whole weekend period. See? Uh, a ver, so putting it into the past is just a matter of taking that first verb and popping it into, in this case, we're using imperfecto. In some cases, it might become preterito here and there. But safe bet for uh, imperfecto with a lot of those. And you'll always get your idea across. Y se me olvidó de usar mi botón de... The reloj, I forgot to use my button here. We're going to call people back in about a minute here. Okay, vale. We'll call people on back. Give them another minute. ¿Qué más? Vale, bien, perfecto. Y bien en todo. Uh, no. Ya no, not yet. We have some people coming in. Aquí viene. Tienen como 10 segundos. Everybody's got like about 10 seconds to finish up and come on back. Bien, bien, bien. Ok, aquí vienen todos. Here comes everybody. Muy bien, fantástico. Ahorita, ahorita, right now. Ooh, and I think Mark either had to leave or he had a glitch happen. Ok. He, he, he had to leave. Oh, ok. Gracias. Thank you. Yeah. And I know Jan had to leave because she had uh, an appointment coming up. Vale, bueno. Algunos ejemplos. A any examples? And here we were just making it shorter. We were just using one sentence. Uh, Algunos ejemplos de querer. And I should put our, our screen oh, up. Una, una pregunta tú. With the, sí, sí, sí. Dime. Tell um, me. Uh, quería leer el libro, pero la biblioteca no lo tenía. Do you have to conjugate the second one? Sí, in the sí, same sí, sí. Ah, okay. Because okay. you're, you're adding on a clause. You're adding a mini sentence onto your first sentence. That's all you're doing. Yeah. So we do need, because now we're talking about what the library, in this case, didn't have. Okay. Right? So the library didn't have. La biblioteca no tenía libro. No lo tenía. No lo tenía. Quería leer un libro. I wanted to read a book. Quería leer un libro, pero la biblioteca no lo tenía. The library did not. It have no lo tenía okay. did not it have no lo tenía perfecto okay vale bien otras ideas any other ideas or no bien vale bien, bien. okay bien uh, we'll talk about a few new uh, and different verbs that combine like this next week, la semana que viene, uh, next week. Uh, today, what we want to do is to finish up with a little listening exercise that is going to be, uy, creo que es breve. I think it is really, really brief. Si es breve. Ah, bien breve. Nice and brief. 
Uh, we're going to finish with a little listening exercise because it is kind of fun. And again, it gets us a little bit with a story into use of the past so that we start to mix in past ideas with present ideas. Okay. Y uh, vamos a hablar un poquito bien, de, es, uy, a ver, es una historia, ¿dónde está? Está aquí. To get our brains into this mode of mixing our time periods here. Sí, bien. Uh, and we're going to leave the uh, subtitles. Oh, this one might do it for you. Bien. Es una historia. ¿Sabes? En Storyland Spanish creemos que una buena historia nos ayuda no solamente a aprender un idioma, sino a mejorar nuestro vocabulario. Exacto. Hoy les voy a contar una anécdota que me pasó hace unos días en Copenhague mientras repasamos juntos vocabulario clave e indispensable de una ciudad. El viernes pasado, mi amiga Paula festejó su cumpleaños. Y festejó. That word comes from fiesta. Ah, es una nueva palabra. It's a new word. Festejar es como celebrar. Así, uh, festejar. Uh, decimos en, uh, we have turned this word, you know, 50 years ago, you couldn't really say we party. Well, maybe 50 years ago we did, but 100 years ago we didn't. They partied. They partied all night. People didn't say that 100 years ago. We turned party, a noun, into a verb, yeah? They have kind of done that with fiesta because festejar. Festejó su, cum su cumpleaños. She celebrated her birthday, and it is su cumpleaños, because I know cumpleaños has an S on the end, but it's not sus cumpleaños, it's her birthday. Cumpleaños is one of those odd nouns that is always used with an S at the end, even though it's only one birthday. So, okay. En un parque muy hermoso de la ciudad. Y fuimos todos los amigos. Ah, and here we've got a past. We went, not we're going. Because the birthday's over with, right? We must. We went. A celebrarlo con ella. We went to celebrate it with her. Hicimos un picnic. Ah, we, we picnicked. We had a picnic. En español se dice hacer un picnic. I borrow the picnic word. <laughs> uh, but if... If you want to say we had a picnic, it's generally used with hacer. And here, because it's over with, it's pretérito, preterite, hicimos. Un verbo muy irregular, pero hicimos un picnic. Repleto de cosas ricas para comer y pusimos globos en los árboles. Ah, we put globos, yeah, we put balloons up in the trees. Pusimos, ok. Al finalizar el cumpleaños, me di cuenta que no tenía mis anteojos para ver. Ah, uh, I am curious that she used anteojos. I do not hear this used very much, but anteojos is kind of in some countries considered a kind of old fashioned word, kind of like using spectacles, right? Most places will use either gafas. Or lentes. Lentes en Sudamérica, en muchos lugares. Many, even though she is South American, she used anteojos. But most people would say mis lentes, uh, most Latin American folk. See, ¿Sí? mis anteojos. But notice what she used. Me di cuenta, I realized. Darse cuenta de is to realize. So we put it into preterite because when you realize something, It happens that fast. Mm -hmm. It hits you, right? The light bulb goes on in your gray matter. And that means it happens like boom. And it's got to be preterito. Me di cuenta que no tenía. I realized I didn't have, but that have part stays imperfecto. 
didn't have my glasses, when you have something on your person in a pocket, in a purse, in your coat pocket, that have is always going to be imperfecto, right? Because I had glasses, or in this case, didn't have my glasses. When you have something on you, it's not an event. It doesn't have a closed ending to it, you know? It was just there. So that's got to be imperfecto. Because it's really, in, in essence, a description of where something was. Me di okay. cuenta que no tenía mis anteojos para ver. I didn't have my glasses. Soy una persona muy <laughs> despistada y pierdo demasiado seguido mis lentes. Ah, uh, yeah. I lose my glasses way too often. Demasiado seguido just means way too much. Ah... Uh, Pierdo uh, mucho could go in there instead of demasiado seguido. Demasiado seguido just means way too often, like over and over again. Okay. Así que la única solución posible fue volver sobre mis pasos. The only thing was to return through my steps. <laughs> Pasos are steps. So we would say retrace my steps, but to go back is fue volver sobre mis pasos, to go walk over where I stepped, literally. A ver si tenía la suerte. Now, to see if I would get lucky. De encontrarlos. To find them. Primero busqué mi bicicleta. Ah, first I looked for my bike en Copenhagen. Muchas personas van en bicicleta todos los días, ¿sí? Es común montar en bicicleta en Copenhagen, donde ella vive. Y recorrí la avenida. Ah, I toured through, I went back through. Recorrer is to tour, to go around, to go through. It's like putting a re in front of correr. <laughs> Uh, it's like rerun. Well, rerun. Oh, I went back along. Recorrí la avenida. Que me llevó hasta el área verde donde se festejó el cumpleaños. Como es una avenida muy importante de la ciudad, está repleta de rascacielos, restaurantes, tiendas de ropa y bancos. A esa hora había mucho tráfico. And now it's a description. There was a lot of traffic. She goes into imperfecto, right? There was a lot of traffic. She's seeing what it looked like on the streets. Congested. Había mucho tráfico. Y la cantidad de autobuses, autos, camiones y peatones hacían más complicada mi búsqueda. Okay, and again, it's just a description. Because of all these things being on the street, people walking, buses, trucks, plain old cars. That's just description. Hacían más complicada mi búsqueda. It made, all those things, they made it harder for me to do the search. La búsqueda, search. Okay. Además, me tomó mucho tiempo porque frené en cada esquina Ah, frené is from frenar. Frene, frenar is to literally put the brakes on. <laughs> but here she's using it to say she had to stop in. She had to stop in to each area at every traffic light. Y en cada semáforo. Después me dirigí hacia la plaza del ayuntamiento, donde me había tomado un café. Ah, oh, I went into that, that central business district, yeah, because I had a coffee there. I drank a coffee there Banco. at a bench. Miré al suelo en todo momento. And I looked at the ground at all times, so that's meaning I checked it out very, very carefully, all the, you know, in case I dropped my glasses there. E incluso fui hasta el estacionamiento de taxis y le pregunté a un conductor si había visto mis anteojos. And I even asked a taxi cab driver, a guy just sitting there at the 
cab, taxi cab. Hey, had you seen? And here, that's a special kind of past that puts that activity further back in the past. If he had seen, yeah. And the had seen is putting it further back in the past to the oldest part of the past is había visto. Cosa. Pero no tuve suerte. But I didn't get lucky. No tuve suerte means it puts an end to it. I had no luck. Usually we say tenia, usually we use tenia suerte. I was lucky describing ourselves and our state of being lucky, fortunate or not. But here she's saying, mm, it didn't happen. And because she's saying that bit of luck of finding those glasses didn't happen, she put it into preterito. I had no luck. It meaning it didn't happen. Those glasses were not yet found. Revisé también la parada de autobús donde me había encontrado con mi amiga y crucé hasta la estación de trenes, pero no encontré nada. Ah, bien, and all those were, you know, events. I did this, I did this, I did that. Ah, oh, didn't find anything. No encontré nada. I found nothing. Uno de los problemas y contradicciones más grandes era que para buscar mis anteojos necesitaba ver muy bien. <laughs> To find my glasses, I needed to be able to see well. Necesita, necesitaba ver. I needed to see. She combined two verbs. I needed to see. But I haven't got the thing I needed to see. <laughs> okay. Vale. Y eso es justamente imposible. And that's just impossible. Los anteojos. Without my glasses. Continué mi búsqueda por mi barrio que es una zona más residencial y no tiene tantos negocios. Okay, went back to the like neighborhood where everybody lives. It's a residential place, so there are not so many businesses. Ni centros comerciales como la zona del centro. Caminé por el bulevar cerca de mi casa y entré a la farmacia y al supermercado que había estado esa mañana. Pero las horas pasaban y yo estaba cada vez más frustrada y cansada. And there, that's all description. The hours were going by and ticking by and ticking by. And I was getting more and more tired, more and more frustrated. Okay, so feelings and, uh, and descriptions go back into that imperfecto. You can Mi hear that. Mi intento fue ir bajo el puente. My last try was under the bridge. Del canal donde the había canal. nadado. Los barcos turísticos navegaban hacia el puerto mientras el sol se empezaba a esconder. And that's all description of what it looked like by the bridge where they had been swimming earlier in the day. It was starting, yeah. Uh, yeah, the sun was now going down. Aunque no tenía los anteojos y me perdía los detalles, el paisaje del atardecer era muy hermoso. All description. El sol terminó de caer. Ah, and, but now, in the midst of that description, here comes an event. The sun finally went down. Terminó de caer. It, uh, it ended falling, I know. But we say nightfall, don't we? Yeah? So nightfall works for this, the sun falling down. See? Uh, the sun finished setting the sun finally went down and now she means to say not the sun was setting but whoop, it's down sunset it's over tuve que enfrentarme a la idea. and i had to face the fact that those glasses were still lost and she uses a tuve que because oh, i'm at the end of my search and i still haven't gotten it done and because i haven't gotten it done my intent is to tell you it didn't happen tuve que imprint i had to face facts and that's over Pero with una vez más copenhague eligió no devolverme los anteojos <laughs> copenhagen <laughs> decided not to return my glass as well okay. como ya me pasó lo mismo tantas veces tengo la teoría 
de que la ciudad se alimenta de mis lentes. Uh, the city eats up my glasses. <laughs> perdidos en alguna calle, Lost in some abandonados street. en alguna acera y que nunca los encuentro para que deba comprarme anteojos de nuevo y perderlos de nuevo, así la ciudad me los quita, se los traga y esta historia vuelve a empezar. Ah, bien, sí. So she loses her glasses a lot from that. Yeah. I gotta go buy them again. I'll probably lose them again. And then we're gonna start the story all over again. Sí, bien. Uh, but that gives you an idea of our combining uh, all these things. Uh, so combining the different tenses, the right now with the it's over with, it happened. And remember that it's over and it happened is complicated because we got the description part, imperfecto, or the feelings part, still description, imperfecto, or the used to do, still imperfecto, versus the, okay, over with, which is preterito. So I'll give you the link to that. It's a very good video to watch again, and it's a shorty, only five minutes. Es corto, es un video corto. Uh, bien, so... Uh, you'll have that. We'll have some new two verb combos for next week. And uh, you'll get a new listening video as well for kind of like the glasses part, but it'll be a, a combination of uh, different tenses. See, uh, but, uh, uh, you know, to look at over this week in between. So we see you again next week on Wednesday. See, todo bien? All good? Todo bien. Perfecto. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah.